Kansas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, thank you for being here today. FDA holds the responsibility of ensuring the safety and integrity of our nation's food, drugs, and consumer products, a responsibility that not only impacts our economy, but also the health and well-being of every American citizen. However, this FDA has failed to meet its mission statement and is defined by crisis from persistent drug shortages to the most significant disruption to the infant formula market in history. We cannot afford to overlook these critical failures. The well-being of all Americans depends on it. Commissioner, I look forward to hearing from you today and on how to address these pressing issues. Despite the backdrop of food and product safety issues plaguing your organization, FDA continues to chase nutrition-related policies like front-of-pack labeling, which are arguably outside of FDA's purview. Can you explain to the committee what authority you feel FDA has to pursue nutrition labeling policy while heavy metals exist on our food supply? Illicit Chinese tobacco products remain accessible, and 263 drugs remain in shortage. We actually have a law that instructs us about uh, food labeling um, that uh, we're adhering to in this case. And I would remind you, we have a shortened life expectancy in this country, particularly in rural areas that's largely driven by diet and poor nutrition. It seems to me, I'm just from South Carolina, it seems to me that putting the information on the front of the package is probably more likely to get the useful information so people can make wise choices. That doesn't seem to me like something that should be uh, that hard to get to. If you put it on the back, if you're like me when you go to the store, you're unlikely to look at can, it. Can you, tell me front, where you can you tell me where you derive the authority to do it, though, specifically? Yeah, we, I'll be glad to get with your staff and go through the details of that, but we believe we do have that authority. I look forward to seeing that. Do you feel it's, best, it's a best use of taxpayer dollars to shape American eating patterns in lieu of addressing these other critical issues? I listed a few issues that are, seem like a pretty big deal, and you feel like I'd, I, certainly tobacco is a huge one. But I'd, I'd have to say, if we look at the fact that we have the lowest life expectancy of any high-income country, it's being driven by chronic diseases, which are being driven by diet. And so, to say that we should pay no attention to diet um, is a mistake. Now, shaping what we're doing is proposing to give people the information they need so that they can make healthy choices and reduce these alarming rates of obesity, diabetes. I'm a cardiologist, vascular disease. I tell my cardiology colleagues we've got no problem with business in the future in cardiology. I, I pointed, going. I'd, I'd only have a limited amount of time. I pointed to front of pack labeling as an example, but it appears the agency has a number of outstanding rulemakings and goals that are not related to food safety. The definition of healthy, a symbol for healthy, the dietary guidelines for Americans, dietary guidance statements, the list goes on. Can you please tell the committee and consumers how all of these pieces fit together? M my concern is that not only are you pursuing actions that you do not have the authority for, but you are also painting a terribly confusing landscape of rules and advice about what to eat. Well, be happy to work with your staff on going through this in more detail, but in short, what we now know about diet, it's a pattern of eating over time that's important and how long people live and whether they're burdened by chronic diseases. It's not one specific thing. It's multiple constituents of the diet when, when eating regularly in a pattern um, create the kinds of health problems that are really ravaging our country right now. If you look at rural areas in particular, we're seeing alarming premature death rates that are going in the wrong direction, actually, for the first time in 50 years. I, my question, you said that earlier. My question is specifically all of these different initiatives, how they work together, and I look forward to getting an answer on that to my actual question. It's been brought to my attention that illicit flavored disposable e-cigarettes now make up a majority of the entire e-cigarette market, which most of these products are coming from China. Can you speak to the factors that have allowed this issue to materialize and what your agency plans to do to rectify the situation? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I mean, we've, we've uh, been over this several times already this afternoon, but in, in brief, um, no one anticipated 27 million applications for uh, vaping uh, products when the door was open for applications. Uh, it has been um, a problem that is quite large and that we're gradually making progress in, as I what, review. What are, what are you doing about it? Uh, warning letters, civil money penalties, injunctions, and seizures, all of the above. 
Um, and I hope that um, we'll continue to be able to increase our presence out there in the field. Right now, we get no user fees from the vaping industry, and that money would enable us to put a lot more people in the field to take down these operations that you're talking it, about. It sure feels like warning letters aren't getting the job done. Can you walk us through whether and how you personally, personally have communicated these concerns to DOJ and Customs? We've had direct uh, meetings, and I've personally gone to several places of import to meet with the uh, Border Patrol and Customs people who are there when the uh, stuff comes in. By the way, if you want to get an education on this, go to the International Sh Mail Facility. Wh what about the DOJ? Direct person-to-person -person okay. meetings with DOJ. Okay. I have the key person's cell phone number to call okay. in off hours. I'm over time. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs>